It was a monumental occasion, the WWE Draft. It's just finished. Are you guys happy? Are you disappointed? Are you just damn right confused? So I said I would do a live review like I'm doing right now if a video the other day got 500 likes and it managed to get 900. So you lucky people are getting my review right now of the full WWE 2016 Draft. So if this video gets over 500 hundred likes I will do a review of WWE Battleground this Sunday. So I was really looking forward to the draft you know I was absolutely buzzing but now I just feel a little bit underwhelmed a little bit disappointed. What do you guys think? What are your opinions on the WWE draft? I just feel like they just didn't give me enough. Now it's really exciting that Smackdown is now live. I really did enjoy the WWE draft. I enjoyed watching it. I was hyped. I was excited. It was entertaining. But coming out of the show, I just can't help myself from feeling just a little bit underwhelmed and just confused and disappointed. I just feel like they could have just done a little bit more and it would have made it a hell of a lot better. We had all these rumors of returning superstars, huge NXT stars coming up to the main roster. There wasn't any returning superstars and the people they did bring up from NXT, some of them were just a bit underwhelming. I think the biggest thing people are confused about is the fact that Raw is so much better than SmackDown. Yes, I understand that Raw is three hours and SmackDown is two hours, but Raw has huge stars on there compared to SmackDown, who has maybe four or five stars, and then it's just a bunch of people we don't really care about. Raw has Seth Rollins, freaking Finn Balor, Roman Reigns, Charlotte, Brock Lesnar, The New Day, Chris Jericho, Kevin Owen, Cesaro, Sami Zayn, Sasha Banks, Enzo and Cass. Raw is huge. But then SmackDown has Dean Ambrose, John Cena, AJ Styles, Randy Orton, which is all great. And I'll even go to say that American Alpha is fucking awesome. But then you look at the rest of SmackDown's roster and it's just full of people we don't really care about. We didn't care about them before the draft, so why should we care about them after the draft. I feel like Raw has twice the better roster than SmackDown has. Now, I'm really happy that SmackDown's live. It does make it even more relevant than it used to be, but how are they gonna be able to create fresh new storylines every single week with such a limited roster and I only really care about five or six of the roster members. I don't know, do you guys feel the same? I just feel SmackDown has been really let down. However, talking about American Alpha, we also have Finn freaking Balor coming to the main roster. That was huge. That is awesome. He is going to be absolutely amazing on the main roster. I cannot wait for fucking Finn Balor to be on Monday Night Raw next week. So the other NXT stars, we've got Mojo Rawley, which is pretty cool. Nia Jax, which is awesome. They definitely need some fresh new faces in the women's division. And to join her, we've got Carmella. So pretty decent, but I really wanted to see Nakamura, Hideo Itami, Samoa Joe. Where are they? They're, they're, they're still on NXT. So honestly, I just feel like the Raw roster is a hell of a lot better than the SmackDown roster. I have no idea how SmackDown is going to be able to create compelling storylines every single week live on Tuesdays for two hours. Now talking about the roster, I think it's pretty interesting that the WWE champion Dean Ambrose has gone to SmackDown. It does kind of create a sense of what is going to happen at Battleground. Is it going to end in a draw? Are they going to put another world title on Monday Night Raw? I'd say yes, they definitely need to bring a second world title back to Raw. I think it's interesting that the WWE Championship, the larger, the more important title, is on the SmackDown, which is pretty interesting for the SmackDown brand, but it still doesn't make up for the fact that their roster is really, really slim. Now, I really like the fact that the Intercontinental Champion has gone to SmackDown. I think that's a more important title than the US title, and that will legitimize the SmackDown brand. I also think the US title on Raw is pretty good as well. I did predict that the US title would have gone Raw, and the Intercontinental title would go on SmackDown. Now, we don't know what's going to happen at Battleground. Darren Young is on Monday Night Raw. Is he going to beat SmackDown's Miz? to win the Intercontinental Championship? And is SmackDown Zack Ryder going to beat Raw's US Champion Rusev? It could all happen, but talking about Battleground, it does kind of feel like really misplaced. Do you remember Roadblock on the way to WrestleMania? I said it at the time, I just felt like it was just really unneeded. Why they decided to do a WWE draft 
a few days before a WWE pay-per-view makes absolutely no sense. One of the high-key matches on the pay-per-view, John Cena, Enzo and Big Cass taking on the club, now makes no sense at all. The club, AJ is now on SmackDown and the club members, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows on Monday Night Raw. So the club aren't a thing anymore, but they're going to be at Battleground in a match teaming up. Huh? Why couldn't they do the draft the week after Battleground? Why did they have to do it the week before Battleground? Because now the high key match like this makes no fucking sense. Now, I do have a little bit of a rant about the whole draft process on SmackDown. Honestly, I thought all the matches on SmackDown were entertaining, but they also felt a little bit of a waste of time. Like, you were watching matches for no real reason because most of the superstars in the matches hadn't been drafted yet. So winning matches or losing matches here didn't really mean anything because they weren't fighting for anything. No momentum was gained. No momentum was lost. It just felt like a little bit of a glorified house show. Everybody was watching for the drafts, but even the drafts kind of felt a bit disappointing because you had Seth Rollins drafted, Roman Reigns drafted, Brock Lesnar drafted, The New Day drafted, Cena drafted, blah, blah, blah. But none of them actually came out and celebrated their draft to their roster. They just played a video package of the superstar and that was it. You would have thought you would have had at least a few reactions from some of the superstars coming out and sort of shaking hands with the GM, something like that. There was nothing. They just said, oh, we want Seth Rollins. And then they moved on to the next pick. It just felt a bit disappointing. Talking about John Cena as well, I do think this is huge for SmackDown. I said that he would go to SmackDown and he is. He will definitely legitimize the SmackDown brand. He did it with the US title, so why can't he do it with SmackDown? He will be a big face for SmackDown, so I definitely do agree with that pick, but the SmackDown roster is still looking pretty shit. I've also got a little bit of a rant about the commentary team. They had four freaking members on the commentary team. We have enough of three on Bloody Monday Night Raw, but four? Come on, they only needed Mauro Ronaldo to do the job on this draft. Four? It was kind of... Uh, my ears... Also, did you guys kind of think that the whole TV switching and all the programs was a bit confusing? I mean, they had a pre-show on the network, then they had the draft on SmackDown, and whilst the draft was going on SmackDown, they had a live show on the WWE Network, and then when SmackDown finished, they went back on the network for more drafts, but the drafts were really infrequent, and most of it was just full of really boring interviews. How confusing was that? I mean, we had to change channels like bloody three times. Couldn't they simply just have a three hour Smackdown show for the WWE draft? I mean, this was the first live Smackdown. It was a draft. It was huge. And they had us going all over the place trying to find out which program we're supposed to be watching it on. Also, what happened to all the returns we were supposed to get? Kurt Angle, John Morrison, Carlito, Stevie Richards, Goldberg, People were even suggesting Jeff Hardy or Matt Hardy could bloody return. I don't know, but there was loads of names put in the hat, and you would have thought at least one of them was going to come back to the WWE, because this was the perfect time to do it. Now, I'm not saying that we won't see any of them in the next few weeks, but surely you would have expected at least one of them to be on the bloody WWE draft. It was just so disappointing that nothing really changed. Raw is still the better show, and SmackDown's just still kind of a little bit irrelevant. Now, I do still think this WWE draft thing is really important for the WWE. I mean, it's been a while since we really had some captivating television. This is competitiveness. I think the draft is the best way to go. I am really excited for the future in the WWE. I thought the draft was exciting to watch. It was huge. It was monumental. It was history making, but also was a bit underwhelming at the same time. I think sometimes as wrestling fans, we expect a little bit too much and that's probably why we do feel a little bit disappointed. But I am still excited for the WWE draft because on Monday's Raw and SmackDown next week, which will be live, things will be completely different. People will be jostling for different positions that have never been available before. There's a World Heavyweight Championship possibly coming back. We've got a Cruiserweight division. Could Finn Balor be at the top of that? We've now got Neville back. That should be thriving. It is a new era in the WWE, but I think we don't really ask for much. And we never really get any of it anyway. And even the NXT stars coming up could have been slightly more exciting. You would have expected at least maybe one return. Am I asking for a bit much here? Raw is a hell of a lot better. Smackdown is pretty, pretty crap. I'm still not convinced that Mick Foley as the Raw GM is kind of the thing they should be doing. Why would a guy like Mick Foley work with Stephanie McMahon? I do think the Smackdown brand is pretty exciting with Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon. Their relationship 
seems pretty cool, pretty genuine, and pretty exciting. But anyway, this was my draft review. I feel a bit underwhelmed, but I do think it is an exciting time in the WWE. What did you guys think? Also, Dean Ambrose is still the WWE champion. What does that mean for Sunday? Is Seth Rollins going to win? Are we going to get a World Heavyweight Championship instead? Is the match going to end in a draw? I don't really know what's going to happen with that match. But anyway, it was all about the draft, really. At least that match didn't end in a draw. That would have been pretty annoying and pretty weird. People would have been even more confused than they are right now. Anyway, this draft from me is going to get a 7 out of 10. I think it's an exciting time in the WWE, but it could have been executed a little bit better. Anyway, take care. Smash the likes. 500 is the aim. Take care. Spike your hair.